weighing in at 210 pounds. It's the ogre from O'Connor. Will you please welcome to the wedding ring? You'll have my family shiver with fear. Uh, I apologise for, for beginning my speech with even more thank yous, uh, not for the adoring and beautiful couple, or for my family who uh, may think they deserve it. I'm the younger brother and that means that I'm supposed to be petulant and embarrassing and I plan to be so forthwith. But I will first start with some Loy Wilson sanity. Uh, well, Helen and his family's warm welcome of my family and I and my sister has meant very much to us. Accommodating Sophie would be a feat in itself, but accommodating my father's eccentricity, my mother's angst and my deplorable antics is not only something to be thankful for, but rather impressed by. Seriously though, the warmth, the humility and the unending patience that they've shown is seem to be boundless and one we will not forget. Luckily, they seem to have passed these trades on to Mohilan and he's going to need them in years to come dealing with us. <laughs> now, where do I begin? Sophie began life as the daughter of the most fierce and protective guardian to ever walk the face of the earth, my mother. <laughs> and the rather strange combination between a Shakespearean cricketer a thoughtful gorilla who, with the fashion sense of the crocodile hunter, my father. How she tamed these two beasts, I will never know, or survive infancy, but by the time that I'd come around, she turned them into the Judy Dench and Sean Connery lookalikes you know today. She has inherited a few things from them. My father's physical toughness and sense of the dramatic and my mother's keen wit and insight into other people. Where we both got our brilliant good looks is anyone's guess. <laughs> However, it's probably the same place we got our incredible humble qualities and our obvious self-loathing. <laughs> we also inherit, we also share a incredible sense of uh, emotional intensity. And while it makes me look egotistical in the extreme, it is what characterizes Sophie, and what makes her who she is. Passion. Passion is what makes Sophie the incredible historian. Um, gives her the ability to empathize with characters throughout history, as if she's able to interview them over some time-altering telephone. Passion is what gives her this drive and this unendless energy to pursue debate and pursue research. Well, that and coffee and chocolate and chocolate paper coffee. <laughs> Passion makes her the greatest friend and the worst enemy, a line that I've crossed many times as a little brother and have come back only with the skin of my teeth. Passion it was, is what makes her love deeper than any film or any story that you've ever seen or have ever heard and is what makes us love her deeper than any story or any film you've ever heard. Passion is what makes Sophie Sophie, passion, undiluted and unfiltered. Mohillen seems to match this passion with an unfettered sense of jubilance for life. Uh, anyone who knows Sophie knows that sometimes her emotion can of sometimes possibly overflow into her day-to-day -day routine. Sometimes. Uh, though most people are swept away on this tide, Mohillen is able to ride these waves with patience and love. Maybe his own great emotions give him an insight into Sophie that is romantic and beautiful. Or maybe he drugs her coffee, we're not sure. <laughs> Whatever the reason, his constant support over the last few years have given Sophie uh, an independence and a strength that we could never have. And this has brought him love from my parents and I. No one can charm like Mohila. <laughs> I remember very well my first conversation with my mother after they'd met and over the phone, oh Sam, he's just such a lovely and kind man. <laughs> yes, I did say my mother the hardest nut to crack this side of a Jane Austen novel. <laughs> 
My father, well, you heard him before. He's just happy, I think, that he can finally talk cricket with somebody. <laughs> You'd think that I'd be jealous of this guy who uh, seems to defeat me at every turn, but I also find myself mystified by this really nice, charming bloke. I, um, I wonder sometimes whether he was made for my sister in a way that that no one else will ever be, or could ever be. Watching them together is, well, rather disgusting. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> enough, you know, enough. As a little brother, I've, been, I've had enough of this. But being with them, you know, they look into each other's eyes, and they hold hands, and they... And, and they sort of tell each other how they feel about each other about eight times an hour. It's positively revolting. <laughs> During the ceremony two days ago, when I was sitting up on the on the dais with Mohilan, and as Sophie, this beautiful, divine creature, I must say, let, let me just please, no one else has said this, she did look absolutely stunning yesterday. <laughs> and she does today. She looks absolutely stunning. And as a little brother, I don't feel as if it's my role to say that, so I feel rather. I feel like stuck in myself. But <laughs> as I was sitting up there watching her enter, this this beautiful creature come into the room, I could feel Mohilan tremble, literally tremble with excitement. And then he turned to me and he sort of looked at me like a brother with love in his eyes. As I said, sickening, absolutely <laughs> sickening. <laughs> now, as as the little little brother, I have no advice. But all I can say is, is that. Sophie, I'm so happy you finally found your Dread Pirate Roberts and that you finally found somebody that can match up to you in your intimidating intelligence and romantic drive. You finally found you as you wish. And Molly, I hope you're ready for an adventure. And I'm glad you've come to join us on it. Thank you. Sam, that was a great speech. In the interest of time, let's get things moving. Whilst officially Molly's brothers, I'm sure in the midst of one of his famous lectures slash monologues slash soliloquies, they felt like they had two fathers. Would you please welcome to the stage the brothers Sri Ravindra Raja, Kieran and Aaron. Um, there comes a time in every person's life when they meet their one true love their soulmate, their destiny. That person who will know and understand them for the rest of their life. That moment, ladies and gentlemen, came from more than 29 years ago when you met me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Gary. I'm uh, Moylan's older brother. And I'm Aaron, and Moylan's younger brother. I've known Moylan my whole life. And that's like... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's like... I must admit, it feels a bit strange, thinking that my big brother is now married. A part of me looks at him and still remembers the little kid who played trick with me in the backyard. So it's remarkable to see what a fantastic young man he's got to be. I'm sure all of you um, can already attest to what a warm and generous individual Mohilan is. So instead of talking about that, what we wanted to do was tell you some interesting tidbits that you may not know about Mohilan. <laughs> He's accomplished a lot of cool things in his lifetime, but he's too humble to to his own one, so we'll have to do it for him instead. Um, most people know that Moylan is a very talented cricketer who represented his schools and university at a high level. Uh, furthermore, his talents were such uh, that he also played a season in England for a local team, I believe it was St Ives, uh, as their designated overseas pro, uh, during which he was player of the season. However, his uh, sporting talents is not just confined to cricket, uh, but also extended to the tennis court. Very few people know that Moylan played tennis while growing up, and he was actually pretty good at it. Indeed, his competitive record was so outstanding with him entering two tournaments and winning both of them. <laughs> he can honestly tell you he's retired as an undefeated champion. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
even my dad didn't know that. Um, <laughs> Moodlin also has great leadership abilities. I remember this from our younger days when he was school captain at Excelsior Public School. He seriously, he seriously felt like he was the big man on campus. Everybody loved him, and wherever he went, he had a band of merry men following him around. <laughs> I remember seeing this like vividly firsthand, actually, when I was in the uh, final of an intra-school chess competition. Normally, like five people would normally turn up to watch a chess game, but not this day, because Moylan decided, you would use his influence, to get all of his friends to come and watch. It, seriously, there was like a hundred people there, and they were, like, they were like climbing up in the stairwell to try and train to get a better view. Like, clearly this is not because they love chess, but it's more of a testament to the influence that Moylan has. Thank you, got so proud of that move. Location and someone read and picked up Aaron's chair. The other front. Um, <laughs> um, not only was Moylan a very popular guy at school, but he's also one of the smartest. Uh, as you know, he was uh, ducks at his school. Uh, Honor, which he, is possible. It is shows that he, it is possible for him to be smart, cool, and great in sport. Yet surprisingly, despite of his intelligence, Moylan is considerably less academically qualified than Dr. Sophie with a PhD. But <laughs> The differences are only been magnified by getting married, as Moulin has now lost his bachelor's and Sophia's has gained a master's. <laughs> Speaking of studies, I'm sure all of you know that Moulin studied accounting at university. This degree helped him gain several useful life skills, such as being good at managing his personal finances, knowing how to get the most value out of his money, and generally being quite financially savvy. As such, we thought he would want us, no, he would demand us to bring to his attention a fantastic opportunity to earn $5,000. You see, as a result of recent budget, the federal government has cancelled the baby bonus for <laughs> However, if you look at the fine print, it's only effective from 1 March 2014, which if you look at your calendar, is actually nine months and six days away. <laughs> Speaking of children, I am a little worried about what happens when they have kids. I mean, I, I bet, I bet they, they're going to have some beautiful chocolate and mocha babies. <laughs> However, given how Sophie loves chocolate and coffee, I hope she doesn't eat them. <laughs> I had to have a baby eating joke. In all seriousness, we also want to. Uh, in, uh, sorry, about, <coughs> sorry in, in all seriousness, we also wanted to say how delighted we are to have Sophie, as well as the extended Lloyd and Wilson clans, as part of our family. Family is so important to us, so we are very excited to be able to add to our family such wonderful people. It's always, always been so lovely whenever we've spent time with, time with Kyle, Judy, and Sam. So we're definitely looking forward to spending more time with you, as well as Sophie's aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandma in the future. <laughs> Furthermore, I know it's cliche, but we do have to say, Sophie, you look absolutely stunning this evening. <laughs> But whilst your dress is beautiful, what's most beautiful is the person that you are. You're an intelligent, beautiful, kind and caring young woman. And Mugilin is a very lucky man to have you as his wife. And my parents and brother and I are very lucky to have you as a daughter and sister respectively. My father always says the best decision he made in his life was to marry my mother. And I'm sure one day Mugilin will be telling your kids the same thing. Welcome to the family, and we wish Muhyiddin and yourself the very best of wishes and hope that you have a long, happy, loving, prosperous, and joyous marriage life together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that, that's a really good song.
time for the next few speakers. If you can get away with a baby eating joke, nothing got that is. Go to town, mate.